a brief summary of the meaning of the two truths. The term two truths is mentioned in many sutras, but its principle is difficult to understand. The world is in an uproar and has debated this issue for a long time. A sutra called the Miao Sheng Ting Ching says, quote, In the past, the Buddha and Manjushri had a dispute over the two truths, and they both fell into hell. It was not until the time of the Buddha Kashyapa that their doubts were resolved satisfactorily. Close quote. If these two sages, in their causal stages, previous to attaining Buddhahood, were unable to understand completely, how is it possible for people with strong emotional passions? Question. Shakyamuni, when he met Kashyapa, was a bodhisattva with two rebirths left before attaining Buddhahood. Why is it that he first understood the two truths at this stage? He should not have previously retrogressed to an evil destiny. Answer. The word previous is to be interpreted broadly. Why is it necessary to limit his first emergence from evil destinies to his life as a bodhisattva with two rebirths left? Also, a bodhisattva with two rebirths left is surely dwelling in the stage just before Buddhahood. There are many levels to this stage. The distinct and perfect teachings do not have this doctrine. In the shared teaching, one is already free from the evil destinies and will never relapse after the stage of severing mistaken views. Therefore, this must refer to the Tripitaka Bodhisattva, who, when he has arrived at his life as a Bodhisattva with two rebirths left, has still not severed all delusions and understands the two truths for the first time. Thus, this meaning cannot be faulted. To have previously retrogressed to evil destinies can also be interpreted in this way. Question. If the Tripitaka Bodhisattva does regress, but the Bodhisattvas of the other three teachings do not, then why does it say in the Savarna Prapasa Sutra that those in the ten stages are afraid of tigers, wolves, and lions? Answer. If one is killed by an evil friend, one can fall into hell. If one is killed by an evil elephant, one does not fall into hell. Thus, for a bodhisattva of the perfect teaching to have a physical body means that he can ascend or transcend the ten stages within this life. This means that though one has already destroyed all passions and has no karma for falling into hell, one still has a physical body that cannot avoid evil beasts. The physical body of bodhisattvas of the other teachings cannot ascend the ten stages within one life. They merely perform practice and gain understanding so that they have passions and can fall into hell if attacked by tigers and wolves and so forth. However, those who have attachments are various. Sang Min of the Trangyan Temple says that the two truths are transcended in Buddhahood and is thus criticized by Chi Tsang, the master of the Mula Madhyamaka Karika. What reality is illumined and what delusions destroyed by this Buddha wisdom? The Cheng Shi Lun masters of the Liang period were attached to the worldly truth in different ways. The interpretations of the Mula Madhyama Ka Karika during the Chen period were various. Some criticized the interpretation of the two truths by the twenty-three scholars in days of old and established their own interpretations of the two truths. The various interpretations, new and old, each quoted different scriptural proofs, and each held fast to only one text and did not believe the others. Now, I do not agree. The different explanations in the sutras and treatises are all good, tentative, expedient means of the Tathagata. His explanations are various and different because he knows their capacities and desires. Briefly, there are three differences. The exposition in accordance with the feelings of the listener 
that in accordance with the feelings of the listener and the wisdom of the Buddha, and that in accordance with the wisdom of the Buddha. The exposition in accordance with the feelings of the listener refers to the teachings of the Buddha that take into account the fact that the feelings and natures of sentient beings are not the same. Therefore, the exposition is different in accordance with their feelings. As the Mahabhapasa Sastra says, there are immeasurable varieties of the supreme worldly dharma. It is the same for the real ultimate truth. How much more so for the others? It is like the feelings of blind men when various analogies, such as a shell, rice, snow, or a crane, are given for the color of milk. The blind men hear the different explanations, but cannot understand, and argue over the meaning of the color white. Is it not milk, and therefore white? Of all the masters, none has penetrated this meaning, and thus each is attached to one text. They promote their own opinions and argue, denying each other's opinions, believing one and not believing another. What vigorous bickering! They do not know which is correct. If they have scriptural evidence, these are all interpretations of the two truths in accordance with human feelings. Those who lack any scriptural evidence are all wrong. Exposition in accordance with both the feelings of the listener and the wisdom of the Buddha. The two truths spoken in accordance with the feelings of the listener are all of the mundane truth. If one is awakened concerning the truth of reality, this should be called the real truth. The real truth is only one. The Mahaparinirvana Sutra says, quote, that which is perceived in the minds of worldly people is called the worldly truth. That which is perceived in the minds of transworldly people is called the truth of supreme meaning. Close quote. That, in accordance with the Buddha's wisdom, refers to the sage's awakening concerning reality. This is not merely a perception of the real, but also a complete understanding of the mundane. Therefore, the sutra says, quote, Ordinary people are active in the world, but do not know the characteristics of the world. The Tathagata is active in the world and understands clearly and completely the characteristics of the world. Quote. If one understands these three meanings and refers to the sutras and treatises, one should realize that, although there are various explanations concerning the two truths, each and every truth contains these three meanings.